Thank you. Thank Konstantin Radu, classical agencies are becoming obsolete in the online world. How do you think they should evolve to be able to win this online world? How can we balance the offline and online presence? What do you think about this? Uh, Your opinion. Um, this is a this is a tough question because a lot of people <laughs> nobody wants to change Malik. That's so, true. Um, you have to, I always say you have to be open for change, otherwise it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's easier said than done. So what I want to focus on are two key aspects. So just to I'll keep it super super short and super simple. Anyone who has an offline agency has to do the first task get a pen and the paper, go on vacation for somewhere and sit down. This is the first thing. They need to sit down with themselves, uh, relax for one or two days and write down and jot down on a piece of paper what they are good at. This is what I generally feel. And imagine in my, in my line of work, I had 14,000 meetings with agents uh, across the 12 years since I'm working for WB. So I, I had my fair share of meetings of people not knowing the online coming in reality they need to sit down, understand what they're good at and where they can bring value now in 2021 in COVID without COVID. It's absolutely irrelevant. They should have done this even beforehand. COVID is just pressuring people. They need to sit down with a pen and paper and write down. I am good at catering to this audience. I am good at doing this. And this is key. And I'll tell you why. The OTAs are here to stay and nobody wants to hear that. Everyone is trying to find ways to, make, to go around the OTAs. The OTAs are here to stay. It's too convenient for us to book uh, using our mobile. This is the reality, uh, be it in uh, America, in, the, in South America, in Europe, doesn't matter. Everywhere, the OTA experience as an idea mm -hmm. will forever remain intact. Nobody is going to go to a, a million hotel websites and book or a million. Uh, it, it doesn't work out like that. So you have to see what's happening in the industry. The airlines are already showing you the way. The airlines want to bypass you as an offline agent. They want to bypass you. They want to jump you and they want to go directly to your customer. GDS fees, uh, not working with particular distribution channels, working with specifically with the, with the direct consumer, not allowing you to do screen scraping. A lot of stuff is happening that is showing you, the offline agent, hey, these guys who are selling the tickets don't want me, number one. Number two, you cannot just sell a hotel. You cannot just sell a hotel. This is the reality. You need to stop thinking that you can sell what other people are far better at selling. You cannot be an offline agent and say, I'm going to sell flights. Yes, but 12 years ago, yes, 20 years ago, you could have done that. Now the airline wants to sell direct. You cannot just sell a hotel because everyone has to can find reviews, can find information, can find more hotels. So what's the solution? I don't want to just state the problem. Find what you're good at and then find your niche. Um, easier said than done. But I, I, I found out quite a couple of niches. And again, I bumped into a lot of, a lot, tens of thousands of, of, uh, of offline agents, uh, LGBT, LGBT travel, uh, senior travel, luxury, corporates, a corporate customer can use an OTA, but a corporate customer and we have customers like that and TMCs, they want to send a WhatsApp and then get everything on, on their WhatsApp. Okay. They can have an app. But still, they need a human interaction. See if you are working with, if you are a TMC working with corporates and you, and, uh, you used to sell hotels and flights for the leisure, mm -hmm. move away from leisure. Or if you are just leisure, like uh, Michael, Michael was correctly saying, even for us, we have clients all around Europe and we're seeing a huge surge. Our bookings are almost, we are 11% uh, less than we were in 2019, which our, was our best year for all of our clients. So we are super mm -hmm. happy to see that. And the same is happening in the, in the States, as Michael mentioned. Look into this trend, understand that corporate travel, if you are a corporate agency, corporate travel will not come back very fast and mm -hmm. move into packages, move into luxury packages, move into um, family friendly packages, move into uh, senior tourism, into um, uh, people are now traveling with the, with the pets, into pet tourism. There are hotels and there are packages for people who want to travel with a pet, which have specifics about them and it's a niche. Now the, the uh, I don't know, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, if people know Orbitz has now rebranded into an LGBT uh, brand. So they, they have found a way for even the big brand to, to focus it on a particular niche. This is the only way for an offline brand to uh, survive, at least from my, my humble point of view. You find your niche, you go online and you start to market to that particular niche. You don't try to fight 
the big otas because it's uh, we know what will happen when uh, it's not like with the goliath story when when small people are fighting the big dog it doesn't it doesn't play out well find a niche market to that niche which is far easier than marketing broadly i'm going to travel particular groups and then and then move into it this is the 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 best advice that i've seen working out for tours in uh, Corfu, for uh, hotels in particular parts of Bali. People that focused on the, on what they were good at and only that uh, did very well and Booking.com was not a threat to them at all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you.